What's happening, Chupacabra Off-Road, back in the desert. Today we're out in Plaster City, Andrew's backyard, and we're here with Wayne Israelson. Wayne owns a suspension tuning company called Altec. Altec Motorsports, yes. And we got a ton of uh, life lessons and suspension <laughs> tuning. We made uh, some miraculous changes on the race car so far today, but we're out trying to learn, get our cars performing better. different but I assume it's because the ground is uneven. So I'm not 100% sure on that but that is my guess just sitting here. Uh -huh. I believe the one they took off the top was a 250 yeah, and they gave me a 350. So I even with 200 and 300? Okay. We have, we have an inch more preload. Good. What's up? Oh. Look at what it does to the thread. It breaks it. These are great eights too. Yeah. You need to shake them correctly, is what it is. Probably thread still inside the actual bushing. Like a plasma cannon? Looks like a gun. Um, starting off, Wayne rode in Andrew's Turbo S. If you guys have been following our channel, you notice that both the Turbo Twins were resprung and revalved by Wayne's company, Altec. Um, we've had several rides, Glamis, I took mine to San Hollow, Octio and um, you know, what is your update after riding in the car with Wayne? What did you guys think about it? So after riding in the car with Wayne, I took him on a little, probably five mile loop. Um, we hit some pretty big whoops, hit some pretty fast sections. Um, Wayne says it's very planted. It, it feels good, it's balanced. Um, it rides really good off of off the bat of what Wayne did. Uh, he wants to change a little bit in the rear, but other than that, he says it's pretty, pretty balanced. Um, couldn't ask for any more. Uh, ride smooth, super plush, and, and the big whoops, fast fast sections. Uh, it rides rides smooth. I, I can't ask for anything better than than that car. So speaking of live valve, Wayne, how do you think about it when you're setting it up? So springs are springs. They uh, you do the same thing um, as any car. It's it's all about supporting load with the with the flexible member, which is the spring. So we do the same thing we do with springs on live valve. But the live valve is different in that it is thinking as you go. The algorithm is thinking about where the wheels are, where the steering is, where the throttle is, and so they tend to have a little more force all the time than a, a non-live valve shock. So we, we tend to valve them a little bit uh, softer to let the uh, live valve actually make some of the force hydraulically in the shock. Uh, rode in Andrew's car, rode really good in soft, but you get it in the firmer modes and it, and it gets a little bit harsh, which indicates to me we probably have just a bit more hydraulic force in it than we need. There's a little way to go. It's, it's really good, but I think we can find a happier medium. It's good now, but we can find a better, happier medium where it can be more comfortable in some situations and firmer in other kinds of situations. Now, in full stiff, it gets pretty firm. Really good for the glamorous G outs and that kind of stuff, but I think we can keep that and do a little bit of valving change and make it better. 
Speaking of Live Valve, I mean, where do you see it going in a couple of years? Do you see some potential software updates where you could create different tunes? Do you think Can-Am, you think most OEMs are gonna have this technology? you think it's kind of the future of the side-by-side -side industry? So yeah, I think electronics is probably the next road we go down. Um, I think there was probably an exclusive for the Live Valve for a little while, and then I think the other manufacturers are gonna come out to, uh, probably no more than, I, than I sh I'm saying now, so I won't say any more than that, but there's probably some more coming out with Live Valve or some variety of, uh, of an algorithm controlled software shock. So Live Valve is probably the future or some variety of uh, algorithm controlled active software that is controlling the shock. The thing that concerns me most about it is there's not a lot of access to it as the end user. You kind of are limited to what Polaris or, or whoever you're working on system has. Now, there's a lot of smart people in the world that are smarter than me that will figure out how to get in there and that will be good for us. But at this point, we kind of have to hydraulically or mechanically match what they've done to make it work. It will be good at some point where we can get something working good good hydraulically and then put the, uh, the live valve in to kind of have a little more and a little less on either side rather than bring the, the mechanics to, to that central point, I guess, if you say, if you could say. In some previous videos, I feel like when I'm trying to relate, is this worth the extra money? I think that's a big question in the community right now. Like, I think a lot of people have a lot of curiosity. They, they know it's probably better. They assume it is. Um, I know that's a difficult question to answer, but I think about, uh, I, I feel like with a bigger, heavier car, with a four-seater in particular, and if you're like us, we do like to go all over the place. Like we plan on going to Moab this year. Uh, we go to Glamis, we go, you know, San Hollow and kind of all different types of terrain. You think if you're like that, if you're into exploring a lot of different types of terrain and particularly if you have a heavier four-seater that it's, it's especially beneficial? I mean, that's a loaded question, really. It's really a pocketbook question. I mean, if you, it's always nice to have more tools in the toolbox, even better tools in the toolbox. And Live Valve is just a better tool. It just does more for you with you not having to think about it. It, 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 does, it does what we would like to sometimes see a set of bumps and say, man, I wish I could get a screwdriver and out there and close the low speed a little bit. Live Valve does that for us. Um, is it worth it? If you're scraping by to decide whether you're buying fuel or going riding or buying diapers, it's not worth it for you. You can have just as much fun in something that doesn't happen. If you're not, and you're in a position where I can afford to buy whatever I want, I want the best of the best, it's worth it because it, it is the next thing. It is technology that will help you have more fun in your car. And that's really what they're all about, is to have fun. So yeah, I think it's worth it if you can afford it. You can see the viscosity difference in it. And I believe there is no hole here and there's no hole here. So your first hole appears to be this hole and it, they bend out of the way allow oil to bypass four ports basically as a, as a piston shoves up through there the oil can bypass but once it crosses past all these holes then you have a bump zone where you have full valving and then start to slow down here and if there's a bleed up here you're slowing down and you you, cut, you actually lose force Catch 
So Wayne, uh, a lot of good information about the average side-by-side -side owner is gonna be doing a lot of play riding. Shifting gears, how do you think about setting up a car like that versus uh, the race car? Um, we've been learning, we did our first race. Uh, recently, if you've been following the channel and blown away by the level of speed and how much different we need to think about driving, setting up the vehicle so we can be competitive. So as that relates to suspension tuning, um, how would you compare if someone is thinking about racing or, or the difference or similarities? Uh, so the race suspension is a different animal in that it's probably got a more narrow focus for its use. So there is some variety of train you hit, whether you're going to San Felipe or Vegas Torino or the Mint or whatever, and you will use your car differently, but in, a, in essence, you're using it the same. You're trying to go as fast as you can to keep the car alive and finish the race first. That's what you're trying to do. You don't typically have a cooler full of your favorite beverage. You don't typically have three kids in the back. You don't typically have any of that. You have your co-driver, you have the, the same, a similar load, a similar goal and a similar speed in mind. And so you can kind of narrow your focus. Um, with that being said, you still want a comfortable car. You still don't want to bottom out. You want to have controllability. You want it to do all the things you want to do. And that's where the shock tuning to me is probably the most important thing for a desert car or an off-road car because that's that's where the rubber meets the road that's what keeps you going forward not rolling over going faster the bumps that kind of stuff We hit it harder and it, it works better when I drive it faster. Yeah. Oh, we would probably always break that. There's no better. You know, my wife drives, drives an Audi and it's freaking the most comfortable car I've ever driven. It's got a bit of a firm road feel feel to it, but it's it's incredibly comfortable and it will hit stuff that you think you go, oh, and it's like, Phew. Oh, that's pretty cool. Keeping the intensity up, up because of your comfort. Right. If you're not, if you're more comfortable, you're not as tired. If you're not as tired, you can drive with less fewer mistakes. I'm good at overthinking things, but basically, I shouldn't need to worry about braking an axle going fast through. What does the braking bump look like there? It was. It was Sunday where they're bad. Chatter. race car today, Wayne, you spent most of the day, uh, went through all four shocks. We had some big issues that we needed to address. Now that we've been running the car hard, we got some footage here of uh, really pushing the car and I feel significantly more comfortable as a driver. Andrew drove it as well. Comfort in the sense, the car is plush, yes. I think the mid-stroke's really plush, but I feel more comfortable going faster without feeling like the car is out of control. It feels more balanced. So um, I'll let you get right into it. We started off with a stiffer spring rate in the front because we were too soft and the rear was okay. And then what else did uh, need a major attention that you worked on? So first thing we did, as you know, is I did my some spring calculations. I basically just measured the loaded and unloaded lengths to determine preload and spring load and determined that you were undersprung up front. It just had too much preload, which started the the car at initial travel way too high in spring rate and it kind of made some weirdness happen and then uh, as we watched the car on the first few runs I, I noticed that the back end didn't look terrible the front end just looked dead it looked like it didn't have any any control of anything it just didn't move up or down so we took the shocks apart and found some issues uh and basically spent the good part most of the morning fixing that and getting those doing uh, 
getting those right, as close to right as we could out in the desert here anyway. And, and then once we got the valving, what we felt was right, and then we changed springs to what the math told us to, to run. And I'm not saying that is the best spring we could possibly run. There might be something better, but without knowing anything about the car, the math said, do this. And so that's what we did. And then uh, as we watched the car, like all those changes, and typically I don't do 10 changes in a, in a row, but when we took the shocks apart and have found what we found, we did 10 changes and we were lucky to have most of them at least, or I feel all of them worked well, but we were lucky to to actually not go off on a tangent because one of them was wrong. So fortunately we've worked on a lot of Polaris's, so we kind of know where we are. So it was, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty good to just make those changes and then once we got the, the back the front working good then the back started to highlight that it, it needed some help as well it wasn't bad but it, it it seemed to be it seemed to move too easy through the travel and we needed to fix that a little bit so we went in the back and revalved and the spring seemed to be okay i'd like to try one other spring moving forward try to soften the rear rate actually a little bit and uh and because I think we've increased valving enough that we probably need to re decrease the spring force a bit. So we learned a lot today. I think um, we feel like the car is really good. We know there's some more upgrades. I think we're gonna send these shocks and have Wayne work some extra magic. We can install some high and low speed compression clickers, which are gonna help him dial in the, sense, the, the comfort level uh, as well as the plushness. Uh, so we're excited to learn more. We definitely need to get um, some more race time on our belt. So like we said in our previous video, what we learned from racing, we need to push the car hard. We did that today with some suspension tuning. We feel better. We've got to keep working on a lot of other things, get a good prep down. Um, we're working towards just learning more, becoming better drivers, becoming faster, and uh, just having a lot of fun experiences, whether we're racing or out riding for fun. So Wayne, thanks a ton. We learned so much today. I wish I could remember most of it to reiterate, but like he said, you know, the, the front suspension uh, versus the rear, there's only one event versus two events of the rear going over bumps. Um, a lot of other uh, lessons we learned in physics and- uh, Wayne Ease, remember Wayne <laughs> I can't thank you enough. I think this is gonna be probably the most learning we're gonna learn in one day all year. And uh, I think it's gonna lead for us having a lot more success with racing, having a more enjoyable, comfortable ride in our cars, and then hopefully helping you guys out there. So if you guys like this content, please like and subscribe. And we've got a lot more coming your way. This is beginning of 2020. <laughs>